Well, everyone, here it is. Uh, we're coming up to the end of 2020. Um, I wanna thank everyone for attending this Practice Management 101. We have guest speaker, Karen Fritz. And without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Karen to introduce herself and give her presentation. Awesome. So thank you, Karen. Thank you, Rod, and thank you, Denise, for putting this together. Um, I really, as soon as I heard about this, I was like, oh, these are people who are really helping to heal the world on so many levels. And as your friendly neighborhood geek, I want that to happen, but it's not mine to do. So what I wanna be able to do is to really be in support of the people who are healing the world, going out and doing their thing, loving on so many people, and letting me stay at my computer and just support you. <laughs> so that's a little bit about where I'm coming from in doing this. My background is in both neuropsychology and computer science. And they kind of have, you know, grown outward into spirituality and quantum physics, and then they start coming back together again. And so now what I really love is to make sure that our small business owners are able to stay in business. That's where I see the real power in our economy and the ability to actually live by our values. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. Rod, could you allow me to share my screen? Thank you. Um, and what we're going to talk about today is actually being able to use our systems to support us. I know that a lot of times, as soon as I say the word systems, um, heart-centered folks and body-centered folks and healers and therapists and coaches kind of go, oh, I don't want systems. It's a trap. Stop. Don't do that. Um, but here's what I know. When you imagine a river, you can tell that it's flowing, right? That's, that's what makes it a river, not a lake, is it's flowing. But as soon as you imagine that river without any banks, it's not a river anymore. It's either going to go stagnant or it's going to flood and get destructive. So what we want to do with our systems is have just enough to keep us in flow, just enough so that our essence is able to move forward in the world. And remember that the river molds its own riverbank as it goes. So we always want our systems to be able to adapt to us. And that's what I wanna talk about today. <clears throat> so, this is just a little bit of my background. I uh, got my degrees from the University of Michigan and went off and did the corporate thing for a while and went, oh, no, this is too much structure for me. I'm a little too creative for this. And so I learned about coaching and meditation and all of the alternative ways of helping people to kind of get rid of the clutter of the conditioning, things that we're told from the time we're little, because brilliant small children aren't always convenient to their adults. And we start to take that on. But what's inside of that or underneath of that is our truth, our divine design. And so most of my work is around peeling back those layers that were never true so that who we really are can shine more in the world. And I do that through using the Enneagram and integral coaching and really building business structures then that match a person's design. And my favorites are the folks who are very heart-centered. See, the problem is most productivity tools out there are built by geeks for geeks, right? If you think back to the initiation of what is productivity, think back to like 
the 1950s insurance office. We're going to do the same thing every day. Everyone here in the office is obviously a man. So there are no cycles. There are no ups and downs. Everybody can show up consistently every day. It is their primary um, responsibility to show up in that era and be the breadwinner. And so all of the productivity best practices that come to us from that era are built for very consistent people who are going to manage from their head. They're logical and linear, gonna just get stuff done. And that doesn't describe the world anymore. Nobody's world. I don't care what flavor body you're born into. The world is constantly changing. You cannot write a 10 year business plan. I don't really think you can write a five year business plan. I really want to stay in relationship with what's emerging today and really be able to access my intuition for which direction to go and then the intellect to be able to support that. So these super linear tools and the best practices that go with them don't fit today and they certainly don't fit people who are more oriented toward people. You know? In one swift way to categorize people as though that's a good idea would be task-based people and people-based people, right? Some people orient their lives around their to-do list. Other people orient their lives around the people that they're in relationship with. And so what we wanna be able to do is say, hey, given that both of those are valid, we need both kinds of people in the world. We're not gonna make one wrong, but what we wanna be able to do is have systems that also fit our people-centered people. So what might that look like? What we're gonna do is say, okay, if I am oriented around the people, and for now we're gonna go within my business world, right? For example, when I want someone to have the opportunity to work with me, First, they need to know that I exist. Then they need to know that I offer what they're interested in. Then they need to actually look at the way that I do that, maybe talk to me. Then they need to make, see how I'm doing. It's actually a progression of bringing people in closer to me. Right? They start out, they're, they're way out on the periphery. They think they might have a need, they might have an, a problem that they want solved, a health issue that they want to address. And they go look for who does that? I want them to find me. Oh, how do you do that? I want them to like the way that I do it. Oh, maybe you're my person. I want them to come talk to me. And so this idea of bringing people progressively closer and closer to my heart is the way that I want my systems to actually be structured. Now, obviously in the marketing kind of a world, they call it a funnel. That's all a funnel is really doing, is bringing people closer, lots of people, and then bringing them closer and further in and closer to my heart so that they're actually going to have the benefit of the healing that I offer. So when I take that and map it to that concept, I can see that there are specific steps in bringing people closer. Let's look at how that works in general. They call it a pipeline when you define the steps. And the idea is to identify the sequence or the series of um, milestones where somebody moves from one level of closeness, one step in, one step in, and to name those. And I like to name them with an adjective. 
these are people that have been invited. These who are people who are evaluating it. These are people who are maybe talking to me and have been offered. Right? So I want to name these steps based on what's happening with them. And that's what gives a context to let me know what do I need to do, or even better, what do I wish I did consistently every time somebody's at that level of coming in to talk with me, right? I wish I sent everybody a welcome email and I wish that I, oh, well, if I know what I wish, couldn't I make that happen? Yeah, I could. Just by saying, I'm going to take each one of these stages, name it, and then define what I wish I did at each one of them. So this is a really nice way to sit down. I, <clears throat> I'm an index card girl. So I sit down with my index cards, especially if you can get the colored ones, like that's the best. And I have to tell you, colored pens, it's, the, it's a thing. So when you sit down and you have your little card and you say, okay, at this named stage, like these are the people they've been evaluating, like they signed up for a webinar or a free offer. And I want them to take that next step to actually schedule an appointment to find out if we match. What do they need to know? What do I need to do to help them take that next step? Right? It might be a follow-up email. It might be a, a series of videos. It might be maybe if it, I met them last month at a networking meeting, it's showing up again. So whatever it is to define what it is that I want to have happen there. So I've got my little index card and the steps on there that I want to do, which is great, except that I won't always do them. Anybody else have that happen? Right? <laughs> I know what I'm supposed to do. And about a week later I go, oh, I should have. That's what I should have done, right? So what I want to be able to do is automate and have the computer do the work of tracking. Like, oh, this person is in this step of coming in toward my heart. These are the things that I can do to help them make that choice or to find the right person for them, right? My, my goal for you is that you enroll or whatever word you use, 100% of the people who should be working with you. And my goal for you is that you allow 100% of the people who do not match and are not aligned to move along, right? <laughs> Trust me on this one. It's, it's the best thing when the wrong person moves on and you help them find somebody who's their, their match. That's also service, right? So when I take these things and I say, for each one of those steps, what needs to happen, right? Did they receive the gift? Did they actually watch the video? What did they think about the video? Would they like to then talk to me about the results they got from the video? These kinds of questions to encourage them to move forward right, at each step. Then what I can do is having started, see what I'm doing is I'm starting from my heart. Right? How do I want to help these people to have their healing? How do I want to demonstrate to them that I care? I hope that every single one of these things that you would send out or interactions that you would have would be in your own style. Right? It needs to reflect you so that the right people step in and the other people step away. So building these from your heart, from your intuitive guidance, 
how do I say, how do I best connect, allows you to really master that communication um, rapport to build that in. Then, then you can take it into a software program that will consistently remind you, hello, it's been three days. You probably want to reconnect with this person. This is, this is the person who could be absolutely looking for your service. Or this could be the person that you really want to refer on to that cool person you met who does it just a little differently. So this allows you to maintain relationships, not only with your potential clients, but with your community, with people who might even be competition, if you think such a thing exists, but they're a perfect match for somebody else. So what I love is that this is just a screenshot from one of my programs. I have my stages defined in the program. I'll show you in a minute how that works. And it tracks all the information about my person and it lets me put in activities. Now, the easy way is to have a software program where you predefine these. And when somebody moves into a new stage, it loads up activities for you, boom, boom, boom. Now, what I'm talking about here are the people you actually wanna have a relationship with right? The callbacks, the meetings. If it's your email list, that's a different program. Those, those are people who are still way out on the edges of interested, right? This kind of an interaction is for the people where you're building relationship and you're bringing them in closer. They're, they're ready. So you have some kinds, some software programs will preload you take what's on your little index card and you put it into the software and say, when it's this day, remind me to do that, will you? Remind me to send this, will you? Remind me to actually close it out, will you? So that I'm not going to accidentally forget, accidentally sabotage what I've been doing. So that's one way to do it. Another way is if you don't have software that'll do that, when somebody moves into a stage, you sit there and you manually enter in the activities at the precise sequence that you choose, the distance apart, so that then it will pop up with reminders. Obviously, you're not going to be doing this for hundreds of people. These are for the ones that are really coming in close. These are the ones who are ready for the healing. Then you have in my software that I happen to use, I have a record like this for each person who's actually in the process of coming closer. I have lots of people who I have their, their records, their contact information, but they're not really coming yet. But for the ones that are, I save these things and I track how close they're coming in and then I switch to another tab and it shows me share there. Are you seeing the same slide where we left off? You're muted. <laughs> uh, I think we're on the next page. Okay. So that's where we start with looking at the relationship and then we can actually take in the software and say across all of those current things that are happening, what's on my activity list today? Or what's on my activity list this week, right? So now I've taken it from the people-centered, you know, how do I serve my people and brought it back into linear time, which is where most of us seem to live most of the time. So in this way, I can then look at what's on my to-do list this day or this week and why. Who is that person that I'm loving on? Oh yeah, I remember. I remember why 
I remember why I want to serve that person, how I recognized that I could help them, and what is the next step that I want to bring them in closer, right? So you want your computer to do that work for you, to both track the, the where is that person, but also track what do I need to do and make it easy, make it easy. So think about this and, and I'm hoping we have a few minutes that you can write down for yourself. What I've been talking about is a pipeline for prospecting, basically. How do potential clients find me and choose me and then choose themselves to enroll and have their transformation. But I might also have a pipeline to track my speaking engagements. In fact, I do, which is how I'm here, because it's about recognizing where might I be able to speak? Who would I contact to do that? What would their group like to hear about? And then following up and making it happen. Also, if you have an extended program that your clients move through, you can have a stage for as they've figured, finished each one of those aspects of the program. And you can recognize that as one of your pipelines. Students can use this to move through a class. It's useful to any number of kinds of project management. Right? But for us, we're working on how do we help the people that we're meant to serve to move forward in their healing. So just write down a couple of different pipelines that you might have in your business. You know, the truth is, as business owners, we have a lot of different things going on at the same time. They overlap and they interact and they crisscross. And so this is one way to help untangle the, the threads of what's going on so that you can see each one and recognize, right? When you see it clearly, it allows your system to calm and your heart to recognize what's the next step. Sometimes in traditional systems, it's just one big mishmash of all the ran quote random tasks. And when we look at it, all we feel is overwhelm, right? So the whole system comes up and out and we're not actually most effective in assisting anyone. So again, this is about having enough, just enough structure to allow us to be able to flow smoothly in our best as we're giving to our people. So for each one of those pipelines, or maybe just choose one for now, look at what are the milestones that someone would move through in that? What would you name your index cards? They have arrived in this stage this is a, an adjective that describes where these people have arrived. Maybe it's um, your new clients and the stage is contract sent. And the next one is completed onboarding. And the next one is intake complete, right? So you name the stages. Then you can start to sketch out for each one of those, what are the steps that the client's going to go through or potential client or speaking host, whatever. And what are the steps I take to facilitate that for them, to make it as easy as possible for them to work with me while focusing on themselves. At the very least, 
I would want you to have a checklist in Word or Evernote or something that you can say, okay, this person came in, I need to send them these forms, check, 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 check. Or I'm gonna host a weekend. These are logistics that I need to have in place. Room, chairs, tables, food, whatever. But ideally, I'd like you to have software that maps those steps onto a calendar for you and says, wait two days and ask why they haven't sent that form back yet. Right? So it reminds you automatically. So obviously the next step, once you have those done, yes, you can do it in a notebook. Yes, I know people love paper planners, but the truth is when you're in a paper planner, first you have to copy things over and over. And that is a waste of your precious time as a gifted healer, as a teacher, as whatever it is that is your gift to bring to the world recopying lists is not the thing, right? It can be an avoidance of the thing. It can be a great place to not do your thing, but when you are in flow and you're giving your gift, you do not want to be spending your time recopying lists. And the second thing is a paper planner is really hard to delegate. I would love for your business to be growing to the state where you have an assistant who takes care of a lot of these things, right? Send those forms to new clients. Make sure the client sends them back. Both of those tasks are quick, easy, and not your gift. So when it's in an automated system, you can have an assistant who can do those things for you. And then you are also creating jobs. Yes, this is how small business economy works. Yes. So, okay, that's, that's my soapbox. I have paper planners that I use for journaling with colored pens. I love my paper planners, but they're not what I use to manage my business. They're great for inspiration. They're great for ideas and drawing circles and arrows for actually tracking relationships and getting stuff done, I'd let the computer do the work because I'm lazy that way. <laughs> so when you look at having software to manage these pipelines, to manage your relationships so that every task that you're doing, you know how it maps back to someone you love someone you care about. I don't care if what you're doing is filling out school paperwork. You can also put your kids in there so that you can see, oh, when I do these tasks for home maintenance or, or my kid's school, it's because there's somebody behind it whom I love. So you wanna be able to have multiple pipelines in the program. Most, CRM tools that are actually for managing relationship, again, not the email list tools, have a pipeline, right? They, they understand moving people forward. However, most of them only allow one. Like you have prospects. There's nobody else in your life, is there? No, <laughs> I'm all the people in my business. So I have many types of interactions. I want my tool to hold all the contact information. It's difficult for me when my contacts hold their phone number and my email program has their email address. And then my Evernote has all my conversation notes or I've got a Word doc for that. I want the history and all the ways to contact them in that one program. It's actually kind of a hub that then I connect my calendar to and other things. Yeah. Which brings me to integration. Right? I want to be able to connect it to my calendar so that when I schedule one of those activities, I see it on my daily to-do list, wherever I look for that. I want to be able to connect it to my telephone 
so that when that person happens to send me a text, I recognize their name. I want to connect it to my email so that when I send them an email and they respond, it automatically goes into their history list. I want to have one place to look. I want to be able to then, like I've got all that about the person, but then there's my day. So I want to be able to look across all of those to see what's on my to-do list. Who would I like to talk with today across all of the different kinds of interactions that I have as a business owner? I would like it to automatically add in those checklists for me. That that generally is a differentiator within the tools of this type. Some you have to put them in, like you put them in a Word document and then you copy and paste it. Like don't type it every time. But some of them you can automate when somebody moves to the stage, brrr, these are the things that need to happen. And some of them have this interesting feature where they will go out to social media and pull in like, right, I'm gonna talk to this person, and see what's up in their world, and it automatically shows me their most recent LinkedIn post or their most recent Facebook post. It's kind of cool. That tends to be in higher end programs, but if that's part of your interaction, then it's important. So the tools to consider. Pipe Drive is the one that I use. I moved off of it for a little while because I thought that social enrichment would be pretty cool and Nimble had it. Discovered that Nimble actually won't connect to my phone contacts without this other program. I'm not big on paying for expensive programs or paying for multiple programs. So I looked at PipeDrive again, it's like a year period in there and by golly, they had that feature available. So I have recently moved back to PipeDrive. I find it to be the simplest and the most visual, right? It has that picture of somebody moving through the stages. But Nimble is also a solid product. It works. <laughs> like, there are no products on this list that lose people. I found some of those. I cut them off the list. So, so Nimble is good. If you're in Gmail, Close is a nice Gmail add-in. So it's right there in your Gmail and tracks all these things. I don't happen to use Gmail, so that's not a good one for me. If you are a more linear kind of person and you like Excel spreadsheets and tables, there is a program called Smartsheet that allows you to add in entire contact records behind the cells in the spreadsheet. Trello is a very visual tool, right? You can have your people obviously in boards and columns of what state they're in, which stage they're in. However, Trello is not really built for this. So you have to do the work to put in all the data about your person, their phone number and their email address and, and so on. So if it's where you have everything else, you can make Trello work. Same with Asana. You can make it work to look like this. But this is a case where for me, I'd rather just have a tool that's built for it. Um, another one that has been really popular is called Less Annoying CRM. And so that's one that you can go ahead and look at if you want to. Okay, so that's that one. So those are the tools to consider. Again, it's about creating just enough structure, not creating a tool that's going to trap you, but allowing yourself to let the computer do the work to remind you, like, who's, who's on my love list today? Who can I encourage to take their next step today? Now, as I mentioned, I use PipeDrive. It, I don't have affiliate stuff or any of that. But if you would like, I do have a little um, like guidebook that I wrote. One of my previous <clears throat> jobs 
was in software documentation. And so making little click by click, type this, go here, do that, um, instruction guides is part of what I do for my clients. So I happen to have one of those for pipe drive. And if you would like a copy, I'm happy to just send it to you. Send me an email, Karen at Karen Joy Fritz, and I will send you back this little click here, download this, put in your name, how to set it all up. And that way you can test drive it as easily as possible. And for more information in general about having productivity that's likely to be able to fit for you, I want to recommend my book. My book is called Purposivity, and it's all about making sure that you're productive, but on the things that matter. And being able to look at that from a feminine perspective, where we work in cycles, we work in rhythms, and it actually makes things line up for us. It has its own website at purposetivity.com, which will just take you to Amazon. That's easy. So if that's something that you're interested in, I would love to have you check out that. It's available paperback or Kindle. So either one is easy. And with that, I want to thank you for your time and check to see if we have any questions or specific interests from people. Karen, I just loved um, everything that you shared. You're right on, spot on with um, the tips and the tools and, and it's very hard, particularly for health and wellness professionals to move into that mindset of being the detail oriented and the tracking system. Um, I've used HubSpot for quite a few years now. I absolutely love it. I love the fact that it's free too and it, it utilizes a lot. But one of the problems with any CRM system that I've experienced is that first of all, it's garbage in, garbage out. And, <laughs> and it's really hard to maintain it being clutter free in terms of the fact that garbage is in there. There could be a million tasks that you were supposed to do, but you didn't do. And information is old mm -hmm. and outdated and it's not recording bounced emails. And you know, unless you have some Zapier or something integrated in with your email system. So do you have any tips or advice for keeping, when you get organized, keeping yourself organized? Um, yeah. One of my favorite things, this is gonna sound weird at first, but bear with me. One of my favorite things is my weekly review. And I literally, I come to my computer, I light a candle, right? So I make this a very sacred space. Mm -hmm. And in that weekly review, one of the first things I look at is, well, okay, first I look at what got done that I didn't check off. Like, can I check anything off? That's always feeling good. The next thing is, what can I delete? What's on my task list that really is no longer relevant, right? There's, there's a category of things that I'm doing now, mm -hmm. right? Things that I will be doing now next week, right? There's a time in the future when I will be doing that thing and things that I will never be doing now. Right? There, there is no future now when I'm actually going to, I'm, I'm not going to call that person back. Just let it go. Take it off the list. Right? And so there's, there's a place for that. Mm -hmm. So there's um, done, delegate, delete, right? And delay, right? Because there are some things that are on my list that is not going to happen this week. I know it's not gonna happen this week. And if I leave it on my list, it's just gonna make me feel bad. The truth is that doesn't need to happen for two weeks. I can just change the date. I'm in charge. This is where the river gets to reshape its banks, mm -hmm. right? And say, when I'm honest with myself, the time this will happen is then, right? So that, that I do that on Monday mornings. Some people choose to do it Friday afternoon or Sunday afternoon. Mm -hmm. My problem is if it's on the list, I immediately think I should be doing it. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's not on the list till Friday. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I do my weekly review Monday morning. 
and literally start my week mm -hmm. with a candle mm -hmm. and an intention setting and go through that weekly review process um, in a very sacred way because my work is sacred to me. This mm. is how I express. This is how, this is my spiritual path, right? Being a small business owner will bring up all your stuff. Mm -hmm. And by stepping into it that way, I make it sacred. Mm. Love it. We have an aromatherapy expert on here. Tracy, what scent would you recommend putting in the aromatherapy oh, yes. diffuser for that practice? Um, for the practice of? Of clearing your calendar for the week. And as, as, as Karen was saying, lighting a candle, what would you put in there? Lavender? Um, yeah, lavender. I like lavender, um, uh, frank and frankincense together. And then there's a blend called Stress Away from Young Living. Those three together mm. really help me kind of let go and, you know, focus on what really needs to be focused on. That's I love a great that. idea. That's great. Cool. Well, Karen, thank you. Um, I, I'm going to turn this back over to Rod since I jumped in with a question. I'm going to need to turn this recording off here very soon uh, as I have a, a meeting coming up in, a, in just a few minutes. So Rod, if you wanna wrap it up so I can turn off the recording. Sure. Yep, so again, Karen, thank you. And everyone who is participating in this and watching this in the future, thank you for your attention. And um, hopefully you're seeing here Karen's information, phone number and contact information. So. If you want to reach out to Karen, I'm sure she's more than willing to um, get you on her uh, funnel. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to love on you. Yeah. Karen, can I so, ask a quick question? You bet. Um, so I just took a quick look at Pipe Drive. Do you just recommend like the lowest program? Start with that one until you actually find a reason to need more. Okay, cool. Um, and so finally, I want to thank Denise and you Define Wellness for sponsoring the Practice Management 101 sessions that uh, Karen is guest hosting this month. So thanks, everyone.